Think of a swamp as the liver and kidney of our surficial waters. The swamps filter storm water before they come into the rivers that are flowing down to the ocean. The purpose of gathering today is to bring members of the community to a public forum addressing the issue of burning wood pellets to electrify Europe. Drax Power Station was due to close in 2009 because it was in breach of nitrous oxide emission levels and plans were made to begin the closure of Drax until the genius idea of co-firing with uh, wood um, happened and that brought the nitrous oxide down. They didn't even consider the carbon. So the UK is spending a billion dollars a year in subsidies to make it possible to cut the trees in North Carolina and ship them over there. Now they do not have the forest to be able to feed that source uh, coming to the southeastern United States as a source of the wood pellets. Almost 40 years ago when I was first a biologist working in North Carolina, you could come down to Brunswick or Columbus County or New Hanover or Pender or Onslow and there were extensive natural lands all along the coast. Most of that is now golf courses and retirement communities and second home communities and so forth. And so there are things to do that can be done to mitigate the impacts of those on biodiversity and on, on carbon and so forth. I want to start off by just saying that everybody in this room is affected by air pollution. Whether you know it or not, where you live determines your quality of life, how long you live, and what diseases you may develop. Taking mature trees that were cut down in the southeast and making wood pellets out of them and shipping them to Europe and then burning them and putting the carbon back into the atmosphere. An additional cutting of trees for bioenergy only exacerbates net carbon dioxide levels and hence climate change plus a host of other negative impacts. Burning trees to generate electricity, we were burning trees to heat our caves thousands of years ago. This is the 21st century. Let's hope we start thinking with a 21st century cap. The Enviva company is supplying a highly polluting power station in Britain. The issues that affect North Carolina affect uh, the people of Yorkshire. We're looking more at cheap electricity than at the uh, enormous impacts that's been made by the biomass industry. As we're facing clear cutting of our forests to provide electricity and energy in Europe, we're really at the forefront of the climate battle and protecting the health and safety of our citizens right here in North Carolina. So we as a society haven't decided it's worth paying for uh, these things, right? It's not right to ask that landowner of 10,000 acres to give up the legacy to their heirs to save that property for us. We have to provide some incentive for that to happen. Making the public aware of the wood pellet issue and the fact that the wood pellet industry has come to North Carolina, particularly in the coastal plain, and what the potential impacts of that are, both uh, scientifically, socially, and legally. And uh, the important thing is for people to become informed about it. In reality, uh, consumption of trees and burning them uh, is a net increase in carbon dioxide, and so a great concern for uh, climate change. People are really experiencing these things on a whole new level right now. And being able to talk about the impacts and the connections between the land and the flooding and the climate and what's happening, I think we have the ability to do that if we're talking to people about the impacts that they're seeing right now. Some people are gonna be motivated by the future and what, where we're headed, and we need to be able to talk about that too. But I think it is an important point that the more we can relate these issues to the impacts of people today, the better off we're gonna be in convincing people to um, stand with us. And as we continue to take away those suitable habitats and push them further apart, you're gonna have this happening. Declines in environmental quality, increase in cost of protecting human health and providing basic resources like clean water and air, and a reduction in the overall quality of life on Earth. We have increased by about 1.3 degrees since 1750 to 1800. 
we've increased by just about one degree since, since uh, from 1850 to 1900. Fracking requires road mats for trucks. Road mats are made out of hardwoods, and so the fracking industry is actually a large consumer of hardwood salt timber. And the wood pellet industry is set up such that trees from bottomland swamps are felled, processed, and exported as wood pellets to be burned with coal, in so doing, generating electricity. So that's why we have to deal not just with reducing the rate at which we're putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, we also have to increase the rate at which we're taking it out because there's already too much in the atmosphere for the climate that would be most beneficial to us. So there is a total misconception that cutting old growth hardwoods is something that pops back and the most aggressive number that we talk about is 50 years. Uh, really old growth trees that have hollows which are important habitats for birds and mammals you know can be 100 or 200 years old. We're skating on very thin ice you know we're basically not for making um, reasonable, logical, cautious, um, and dare I say it, conservative in the both the political sense and the conservation sense, those two words should be interlinked. We're not making conservative choices about maintaining aspects of this world that will secure a long-term future. People think that clear-cutting our forests, that it's somehow bio-neutral, and that it's not going to affect us in terms of climate change. Policy emphasis and financial resources need to be focused on promotion of maintenance services provided by fully functioning forest ecosystems. That is carbon dioxide storage, oxygen production, water quality, quantity management, recreation and protection of wildlife biodiversity. Forest products are unquestionably vital to our daily lives. You've got to wait another 30 to 50 years before that carbon store comes back into being. And I think given our current state of global warming, we can't afford to, to do that. We need to keep the carbon stores intact. So we have swamps in the southeastern U.S. that look today just like they did 3,000 years ago. Here in southeastern North Carolina, we have swamps that have standing trees in excess of 2,000 years old. Now, in 2014, I, I and, and some other people in this room met with the people in the, the Department of Energy and, and, and um, Climate Change in, in London, and I explained why it wasn't carbon neutral. And finally, the international lawyer in that group, in frustration, said to me, Dr. Mumal, you do not understand. If we do not count our bioenergy as carbon neutral, we cannot meet our obligations to the European Union. And I said, and the, to the atmosphere? Mixed in with the smell of the hog feces was the smell of pine material. So I knew I was in the plume and part of that was coming from the uh, VOCs that were released uh, from the plant. Now, I've also smelled the same smell down in the port area nearby where the storage plants are. And those storage from in Viva, they do have emissions of their own. That utilization of waste wood uh, is one thing that was used to sell the idea of bioenergy and actually they're uh, consuming a lot of uh, hardwood whole trees in the coastal plain uh, just because of the availability of it and ultimately there's just not sufficient waste wood in order to do it. It's a woefully wasteful endeavor but right now because it has the prefix bio as in biofuel, it is regarded as something good for the environment. Calling something bio or eco doesn't mean that it's necessarily good for the environment. Air pollution is a multi-system health threat. And if we start with the heart, uh, increases in PM2.5 have been directly linked to early death, cardiac ischemia, cardiac events, high blood pressure in the lungs on an acute basis, PM 2.5 and the VOC and the ground level ozone is linked to acute asthma flares and chronic asthma, chronic COPD 
re reduce lung function and lung cancer. Kill the subsidy and it won't work. That's why U.S. power companies aren't burning wood pellets, even if they cared about the air, because it doesn't work economically. And for the advocates in the, in the U.K. for this to happen, they need more support from us. They need more solid science. They need more anecdotal stories. They need more Americans to go over and say, I want to tell you what's really going on in the river bottoms of North Carolina. Uh, the reason that we're struggling at this point is folks are making a lot of money uh, in this wood pellet business and local governments are getting tax benefits, states are getting tax benefits. Uh, there's just like any uh, big natural resource extraction industry, there's a lot of money that's going to go into maintaining these subsidies and maintaining uh, this structure. Because in eastern North Carolina, our forests are a big part of who we are and what we love about where we live. So the other thing is that, of course, when we cut down trees to burn them, we lose all these other ecosystem services, all these other environmental services. Instead of paying these big subsidies to cut down trees and burn them, what about paying subsidies for keeping the trees standing for each of these services that we use? Sea levels rise, glaciers melt, permafrost thaws, it releases more carbon dioxide. Even if we think that on a, on a, on a carbon neutrality basis over uh, 50 years or 100 years or however long it takes trees to go back, we might be carbon neutral at that point compared to what we did 50 years before, but we are not climate neutral and we are not climate effects neutral. Governments in Europe, North America, the United States government, local governments, state governments, all working with irresponsible corporations to make this happen in violation of the interests of everyone in this room. Government, it is shocking to me how complicit governments are in these destructive aspects. So each of us has to do what we can do. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm a scientist. I'm working with scientists to try to make sure that we fill in all the gaps so that the fake science can't survive. That's one of the things I can do. Making your voice heard is the most important thing, one way or the other. Getting your neighbors to make your voice heard, uh, make your legislatures, legislators understand that you're not happy with this and you think that uh, you know, we need to take action on it. We're stuck here on Earth, so it is our responsibility to take care of the resources we have right now. Trees are our best asset. Just becoming informed and then uh, really working with decision makers is the important thing because a lot of this gets down to policies and uh, economic incentives with subsidies and so forth. So having good informed citizens and acting, acting together as a group I think is probably the key for the near future. And the concern is with a trend in climate change, the amount of carbon dioxide is continuing to increase in the atmosphere and that's well documented. More carbon dioxide means more heat retention and then you have a host of issues that have been uh, really well portrayed by the uh, International Panel on, on Climate Change. We have this world that we depend on to live in. We've got to take care of it, folks. We've got to take care of it. We should all be concerned about our children's and grandchildren's future and what kind of world we're leaving them. And right now, it's not going very well. The future's not looking good. I've got two grandchildren myself, and, and one of the reasons I get so involved in these things is because I'm trying to do what little I can to try to make the world better for them, and we should all think that way. When you want to know what can I do to make a difference, the answer is consume resources responsibly. That's as simple as taking your bag to the grocery store. I know that seems kind of mundane, but it gets down to that level. Simple solutions exist. We have to make energy choices that are going to give us the energy we need, but we need to be responsible about it and look at sources that are going to be renewable and not exacerbate the uh, climate change trends. Um, join the Sierra Club, join the Dogwood Alliance, join um, the National Resources Defense Council. Um, read, get the information, get the facts. Um, and talk to your politicians. I think you've got to pester and make a lot of noise in the streets. 
We can see consequences of climate change right now. We can see observably consequences of wholesale bottomland swamp clear cutting. Those things are already in play. We're not talking about some future condition. Let's get past talking 2100. We're talking 2017. Mm -hmm. The Carolina.